I used to be a pretty big stoner back in the day, would always smoke at parties, have five or six cones after work, and was usually high when not busy during the day. Never touched anything other than some coke here and there, so consider myself pretty tame. Weed started losing its touch for me and missed how it used to feel and ended up getting my hands on some hash, and that shit was like smoking for the first time again. It was amazing, but I also knew not to abuse it, so I would only have it here and there. One day after work, I was pretty desperate to have a cone, so I ended up chasing a few dealers with a friend, but we came up short, dropped her home after about an hour, and gave up since I had work in the morning. I got home and was about to head to bed when a family member ended up packing me a pipe mixed with some hash, and at the time, I thought I was the luckiest bloke alive. That was not the case. Mind you, this was a smokeless pipe, so I'm not sure if that has more of an effect, but I had a few pulls and was satisfied. After talking to my parents for a bit, I was feeling off, so I decided to watch a bit of YouTube and fall asleep. That's when the horror truly began. As of out of nowhere, I noticed my heart beat, heavy and fast. I was supremely anxious and knew that something was very wrong. It felt as if I was floating above my own body in a way I can't really explain, as if I was trapped in my own body and was trying to escape it. I remember feeling like something was in my room, just watching me, breathing heavily and slowly. I looked over and saw a shadow in my already dark room. I didn't really react, but still remember it to this day. Then the thoughts came rushing in, that I was dying of a heart attack. All the thoughts of what my family and friends would think when they found out I died from a fucking heart attack and how pathetic dying that way would be. I threw myself out of bed and went to my parents' room and told them what was happening as they were very understanding and experienced with weed and hash. My mom comforted me and made me feel better somewhat. I felt as if something had changed in me, like a switch that had laid dormant for all my life had been thrown suddenly and I couldn't turn it off. After going back to my room slightly more calm, the thoughts came back, the panic came back, and that shadowy fucker did as well. It got worse and worse as I slipped into psychosis. Still somewhat coherent, I decided I wasn't doing this and called an ambulance. Both my mom and dad knew it was stupid, but couldn't convince me not to go. On the phone with the emergency services and my mom next to me, they got me to focus on breathing and calming myself, and it was working. I could feel myself coming back, but that's when everything went to shit. My dad was a functioning alcoholic. He'd rarely get drunk, but would always have a few drinks in the Arvo, and this night he had a couple more than usual. He'd been through some pretty fuck shit when he was younger and knew what I needed was a cold shower, and fuck, I wish I listened. He broke my concentration and started yelling at me. I told him to fuck off and that he isn't helping, but it got worse and worse and at some point in my state, I decided that these two people I had known and loved all my life weren't my parents and in fact had been replaced by some evil clones to try and kill me. I guess my reasoning was that in my mind they weren't taking me seriously and didn't want to help me and that the weed I smoked was laced with poison to slowly kill me. I was gone at this point, full drug-induced psychosis, whether because I got laced or I just wasn't mentally ready for that much weed, but whatever it was, I was still in my own body, but my reality on everything was warped into something evil and twisted. I calmly walked to my room and told my mom that I just needed a second to myself. I grabbed the biggest bowie knife that I had as I collected them with my dad and brother and unsheathed it. By this point, my fight or flight kicked in and I had two choices, cut out my window and run for it or avenge my family and go out swinging. I decided on the latter and figured it was my time anyway and that I wasn't going to go quietly. I threw my door open and hopped on my bed because I was convinced men would come out from under it and out my closet to kill me. I screamed that I knew what their plan was and that I wasn't going to go out so easily. As you can imagine, my mom freaked out. She was crying at me to put the knife down to calm down, but all I heard and saw was something evil trying to deceive me. I thrashed the knife like a lunatic trying to get them to stay away from me till I could figure out what to do next. Like something out of a horror movie, I thought that everyone had been replaced at this point and I would have to find a group of survivors who has escaped and do whatever it takes to survive this. My father, out of fear for what I might do to myself, slowly approached me while demanding I stop this bullshit and calm down. He kept approaching and I yelled for him to stay away and that I know what he is, but he kept coming. I don't know why, but instead of trying to kill him, I just slashed at him, caught him on the ribs and it went pretty deep. But by some miracle, there was no serious damage, barring a little bleeding. 
At that moment, I was terrified because he barely reacted to a pretty bad cut, but somehow managed to get me out of my state. It was as if I could finally see out of whatever veil had been placed over my eyes and I knew what I had done. I had attacked my own father and threatened my parents. The confusion, regret, and fear was something I won't ever forget, but I was at least kind of myself for a bit. I sat on the couch while waiting for the ambulance and now cops would show up while my mom took care of my dad. They showed up and I was myself enough to answer their questions. I started to sob uncontrollably till one of them offered to take me to the ambulance so I could regain composure and they could check up on me. Another stupid fucking decision on my part. As soon as we stepped outside and I apologized to my dad for what I did, I was greeted by a troop of cop cars and officers and instantly felt the veil coming back over me. I told the cops that were with me that I wasn't myself and I need help, but obviously they aren't going to listen to someone who's just lost their fucking mind. In the ambulance, the psychosis came back. Now I was sure that I was too much of a hassle to deal with and they'd just kill me in the ambulance as it would be easier and my ego would not let that happen. As if some deceitful presence had a hold of me, I somehow convinced all the ambulance officers and cops to leave the ambulance one by one till I was alone in there. Picking up a metal water bottle, I armed myself and would take as many out as possible before I was taken out. With a metal bottle in hand and my anger at an all-time high, I yelled and abused the cops, rambling about how I knew what they were and that I was next on their list. One thing that sticks with me at this point in the night was that the cops and ambulance workers didn't seem to care. I remember them laughing and smiling at me as if egging me on to do what I thought I had to. I'm sure it didn't happen that way, but it's still horrible to think about. I tried slamming the door closed, but they stopped it and rushed me. The rest is a blur, but I broke two officers' noses with the bottle and gave another one a concussion. They pinned me down and after another couple blows to the cops holding me down, they got me in cuffs, drugged me up, and took me to the hospital. I spent some time there, eventually coming out of the effects of what I had taken, and the guilt and shame will never leave me. I went through the courts and suffered some pretty horrific after effects, had crippling anxiety and panic attacks, couldn't sleep, relentless sleep paralysis, never touched any medication to help me, I was going to deal with what I had done in my own way. I ended up finding strength and relief from everything through God. I know it's not the ending some would expect or want, but it's what helped me heal and become a better person and the man I am today. When one experiences such unexplainable evil and darkness in their life, the only answer to that is opening yourself up to love and light. I cannot change what I did, but I can heal the pain and be better than I was. I'm closer with my family now and pride myself on being the best person I can possibly be and will never stop trying. When I was 15, I had been smoking carts for a while and after I was caught by my parents, I was so depressed I decided I wanted to take it a step further by tripping balls on an edible. I had never taken them before and I just thought I would be kind of out of it. I had overdosed on ibuprofen before and blacked out so I figured something like that would happen. My first mistake was I took it with someone I didn't necessarily trust with parents home. My second mistake was that I took the whole gummy. I remember it tasting like I was literally eating gasoline. Everything was fine for about 30 minutes and it just felt like a regular high until I decided to order pizza. I had ended up in my high state ordering like $60 of food. My friend told me to go outside to get it because she didn't want them to knock on the door and wake up her parents. I agreed and went outside to stand. The pizza place was like 5 minutes away from her house for frame of reference of how messed up my time scale was. I stood outside in shorts and a t-shirt in 45 degree weather in the middle of December. I was fine until I began to hear a noise, almost like something hovering over me like a loud buzzing. I figured it was a car coming around the corner when I saw a bright light at the end of the street. It seemed like hours I kept looking at the light waiting for a car to come around the corner until I started to see an alien-like creature, but it wasn't like it was actually there, I just kept picturing it and feeling its presence near me. The outside around me started to move around and the alien started to explain things about the world like that it was not real and I was not real and that the things in history that had happened were all set up. I started to see the images of people setting up wars and monitoring them. I was so scared, but in that moment, I just continued to stare into space. 
After what felt like years and was literally five minutes, I snapped out of it and started to freak out. I was so focused on what I had seen, I was convinced I traveled through time and I was chosen to see the truth that our world and society was entirely fabricated. The bright light had dimmed until I saw the actual light of the pizza delivery car coming around the corner. I was shaking at that point as I accepted the pizza from the man and went inside. I was terrified as to what to tell my friend about what I had seen. Of course I did though and she told me I was just a conspiracy nut. I shook as I asked her what to tell my mom. I didn't know how to tell anyone that we were in a simulation. I told her I saw some shit outside and she ignored me and went to bed. I then began eating my pizza and began to choke. I was convinced the simulation was trying to kill me for knowing the truth. I began to cry until I finally got the food down. At this point in my life, I was very depressed and I was going through a very rough time. I felt my heart rate increase as I laid down and it sounded like a firework. I thought at that moment that I was going to die peacefully in my sleep and I closed my eyes. At that point, I think I had fallen asleep until it was almost like I woke to see blackness through a screen. Only later did I realize this, but my eyes were open. I was staring at the dark room with the fan on, but all I was focused on was blackness. My brain had confused the sounds of the fan to the sound of scorching flames. I laid there for a moment before I began to be terrified believing that I had died and woken up in hell. I began to reflect on my life and the people I knew and I regretted it all. I realized it was too late and I was stuck there forever. In my head, I begged God to give me another chance that I would do anything. I am not a religious person at all, which is why when I sobered up, I was so confused by this. Then suddenly, after what felt like eternity in darkness and flame, I had snapped out of it almost like I had woken up, but I was awake the whole time. Like when you look at something from a different angle and realize it's not what you thought it was. I jumped up out of bed and grabbed my phone. I had completely forgotten about the drugs I had taken and I was convinced I had been given another chance by God. I ran to my friend's front lawn barely being able to balance and I called 911. Miraculously, I somehow remembered her address. The operator asked me why I called and I told her, I think I'm going to die. I eventually passed out on her front lawn. I remember seeing the EMTs run to me and losing consciousness again. Then I woke up in the back of an ambulance, passed out again and woke up in the hospital. They asked me what happened and I just told them I burned in the flames. No one understood what I meant though. It wasn't until I sobered up but I realized I had imagined the whole thing. I had to go to outpatient rehab for two months. They did a drug test on me at the hospital and it turns out my edible was laced with LSD. Please look out for who you are buying your drugs from. At around 6 p.m. today, my friend Gracie texted me on Messenger asking me to please call her. When I answered, she was hyperventilating and crying while speaking in complete gibberish. After a while, I eventually got her to calm down and tell me what happened, and from what I could gather along from what she told me later, at around 5pm she met up with a friend to smoke pot. She started feeling funny and laid down wanting to go home, but the guy kept insisting that she stayed and only got angrier when she denied. It eventually started storming and she took that as her window to get out of there. On her way home, she described while on call that she felt isolated from the world and her vision was wobbly, almost like jello. Her hair tickled like her scalp was moving back and forth to the wind and would black out often to realize she has traveled some distance down the road. When she got home, she immediately laid down in bed. She described the experience while lying down as if there were no planets or universe, only her bed, and felt as if she was dying and wanted to call someone. The rest of the report will be on what happened during our call. Gracie said that she could hear noises and voices from within her room and would see things in the corner of her eyes, felt bugs crawling on her skin, and would talk about skinning herself and the people around her. Gracie would go into detail about after skinning people, she would wear the skin to become them. During all of this, she would often puke and then start eating again to only puke it up all over again. Probably the most out-of-pocket thing she said was that she would never watch TV or use social media again because they were trying to brainwash her into becoming a warlord. 
After about an hour into the call, she had started melting down because she wanted to talk to her friend Zeke and he wouldn't answer. She believed that it was because he hated her and never wanted to talk again and started crying and screaming. Gracie is usually a very laid back and kind person, so it was shocking seeing her in such a crazed state. During all of this, I managed to convince her to not leave her room and interact with people in her house or they would know something was wrong with her. At around 7 p.m., Gracie started to come down some and she described it like the world was falling apart and she was hit with a wave of depression. She ran it on about how Zeke hates her and never wants to talk to her again, even though I kept assuring her that wasn't the case. It's now 9.50 p.m. as I write this, and she still isn't at 100%, and I'm becoming concerned that whatever she smoked might end up having a long-term impact on her. I've come up with the guess that she took PCP because she showed a lot of the effects of the drug, which include dissociation, hallucinations, anxiousness, fearfulness, paranoia, trouble speaking, dry mouth, increase in appetite, vomiting, an elevated heart rate, and probably some more. It could also probably be some research chemical. I would appreciate it if you could all leave comments trying to determine what she took. Update. I went on Discord and asked around as to what people think she took and someone suggested it could have been K2 or meth. I called her back at around 11.30 and she was talking about jumping out her window and feds going through her trash bins like it was a normal occurrence. I think she might be going through psychosis, leading me to believe that it was in fact meth in the weed. I've been smoking weed multiple times a day, every day since October 2020. Plenty of shrooms and edibles. I've even had a 2000 milligram edible once, and it wasn't even close to being as strong as what I'm about to explain. I've done other things, but I won't include them apart from one very psychedelic aerosol trip I had, which I was reminded of during my nightmare trip. It was a regular day. My friend told me about this edible that was supposedly around 300 milligrams for only 5 pounds, so I was pretty reluctant to get it. Once I got it, I ate 90% of it at around 8pm, and within 5 minutes I felt a little strange but didn't think much of it. The guy I got it from texts me, just so you know the white shit on top is glass sugar, and you can tell why that gave me a bad idea. I decided to take off my shorts and socks because I felt like I couldn't regulate my body temperature. I decide that I need some energy and started to prepare to simply make three fried eggs. During the whole process, I gradually descended into madness. I felt a demonic presence and it just spiraled out of control from there. I yell very loud, Christ is King! And keep in mind, I live in an apartment complex with extremely thin walls, and the entire time I lived here, I've made an extreme effort to be very quiet at all times. I've realized God is communicating with me at this point, and I'm losing sense of all reality. I'm faced with the choice to accept a deal with the devil, and I'll be shown the secret to an abundance of wealth. I'm talking to myself and laughing hysterically very loud. I accept it! I accept it! I realize my entire life has been recorded and I just need to do something completely awful to make the footage even worse because somehow that would equate to publicity, fame, and wealth. I had to tell someone and I felt like they would listen and understand no matter what because with this plan we could be extremely rich. Now I feel like I was given more than the secret. I am now permanently in hell and I have been here all along. My hell is that I will be reliving this moment forever and I am stuck in this loop. I'll be reliving the embarrassment that I feel when I do something antisocial and terrible. With only boxers and a shirt, I sprinted out of my house down to a park which was one minute away and saw a group of people smoking a joint. I'm extremely loud and trying to tell them about the plan to make money. The only word I could muster out was money. I don't remember really what I was telling them or doing at all. It wasn't me and I wasn't there. But almost the whole interaction has been recorded and I cannot believe this has been done by me. God was telling me that I had to get punched so all of this could end. I sucker punched this poor guy in the face and then I realized God knew I could take a punch since he knows what I am thinking. Realization hits me and I yell multiple times, I need to kiss a guy, I need to kiss a guy. I only remember fragments of what happened, but I remember I ran screaming like a banshee towards a gym and a bar. Many people saw me going absolutely spastic. I was told I was bashing my head against the floor. I fell really hard on my side. 
My friend's girlfriend was there. She said she tried to give me water, but I threw it out of her hands. I told her, I know you did this to me. I know where you live. I'm going to kill you. I have absolutely zero memory of me doing any of that. I don't even know where she lived. I don't remember her even being there at all. None of it. One thing I can remember is just a bit of my reasoning for all of this. I had to do something very bad so this could end and I could escape slash die. I've said extremely terrible things, hate, racism, etc. I didn't mean any of it and could never stand by it. I just said it because I had to end this. I think the ambulance and police arrived very quickly. I was strapped to a stretcher and I just remembered saying the most extremely absurd, insane things and ravishing like a wild animal. One of the straps was very tightly pressing against my balls for the whole ride to the hospital, a ride I had no idea what was going on, just pain and confusion. I'm not that great at explaining things, but I just cannot say how truly nightmarish that was. I remember that they shoved a long tube down my dick. The pain was just excruciating and burning. That simultaneously with the straps made me feel like I was being raped by demons. Keep in mind this whole time I'm under the presumption that my whole life has been a lie. I'm in hell for eternity to relive this. After a few hours I gained consciousness, explained I didn't know what happened and I was laced with something. They understood and let me go at 6.30am. They gave me a pair of shoes and shorts. I was bare naked on hitting the ground very hard. My feet were absolutely ruined and looked infected but I'm currently treating this. My entire body hurt, like I've had the most vigorous full body session at the gym. Literally no idea how I've used all my muscles to this point. The next day, I was told by the people I was harassing to give 50 pounds to the person I punched, and they seemed to understand after I explained I was laced. I was terribly sorry to them, and we spoke a decent amount of this, and I think we're okay. She even said, thanks though, I had a great time. I'm not sure what to do now. It's been three days so far, and the realization of what happened keeps hitting me harder. It doesn't feel like I did it, but I was mentally there to live through it. The gym I go to daily is right in front of the bar, and it's impossible not to be seen. I guarantee everyone knows and despises me. My whole life, I made sure to never do anything crazy and seem like a normal person. This totally ruined my life, and there's no going back. The next day, I wanted to ask the guy what was in it. He blocked me and deleted the message about sugar. I also have to mention that this was extremely psychedelic. I was in a void slash cosmos environment, running through a tunnel of light with lightning speeds, lots of lights and patterns, aura, etc. 